Hey, what is up Raptors? Thanks for watching the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. If you are new around these parts, please be sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. I really, really do appreciate it. So today guys, we're just gonna be going over some rig basics, some 101 kind of stuff. Now, a lot of you that are veterans in the space, you know all of this stuff, or if you built a bunch of PCs, you know this stuff. So if you watch along, just leave any comments with maybe some suggestions on how you do these things, how you do it differently, maybe some tips and tricks that you found. Otherwise, the whole point of this video is I get a lot of questions surprisingly it surprises me and I'm getting them so it may surprise you to find out there are still a lot of people that are getting into this space and mining and frankly just building PCs so today I'm gonna go over some of the basics that you need to know for example I get a fair amount of questions about wrapping risers and why you would need to do that and it's mostly on the ASRock H110 mining board where those PCIe riser cards are really, really close together. You never want metal on metal contact on any of your motherboards. And there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can just wrap that tape, that electrical tape all the way around, or you can clean it up a little bit, but I'm gonna show you how I do it on some of mine. And you might, again, ask why I'm showing that. Um, I've had people say that they've watched my videos and they've tried to zoom in and see how I wrapped my risers when I needed to wrap them, and they were having trouble seeing it. So I thought I would just show a video um, on, on how I did that during one of my builds. So that's just an example. I'm gonna show you a couple other things here. And as I get questions from you guys, things that I just take for granted, I'm gonna put them in a rig uh, basics video and we'll continue on with part two, three, however uh, many we need to get your questions answered. So that is what we are up to today. We are gonna start out with giving out an asset from our last video from a few days ago. Uh, so let's jump right into that. All right, if you watched the last video, you know we gave out the Wonder Boy bat from uh, The Natural, the movie, and today we are giving out the Golden Snitch from Harry Potter. So, uh, and as you know, this is just for fun, guys. I'm not actually sending you a Golden Snitch. This is just for fun. Uh, and I'm also gonna give out a few more of the Savage Mind coin that I've got, and I'm gonna send out some Hash Raptor coin as well. So let's jump right into it. All right, so here we go, guys. We're gonna pick a winner from that last video. Hopefully you left your Raven Asset Aware wallet address. And let's see here. Oh no, he didn't leave an address. Let's pick another one. Jeff R. Thanks for the positive vibes. Oh, here we go. All right, Crypto Haven. Congrats, Crypto Haven. I'm going to send you some Savage Mine coin. I'm going to send you some Hash Raptor coin. And you are also going to get the Golden Snitch. So keep an eye out for that on your Ravencoin wallet with your address that is asset aware that's going out right now. I'll start with some Savage. I think I've got four Savage left. So we're going to send you half of that. And here it comes, boom. I'm gonna send you 10 Hash Raptor tokens. And best of all, the Golden Snitch. All right, sent. Congrats, Crypto Haven. All right, guys, hey, be sure to leave your Raven address in a wallet that's asset aware in the comments below, and we will put you in for the drawing for the next week's giveaway. And what are we giving away next week? We are giving away the idol. That's right, folks, the idol from Raiders of the Lost Ark, 1981, one of the best movies ever made starring Harrison Ford. So be sure to leave your address below. And no, guys, you are not getting a physical idol sent in the mail. This is a virtual asset. This is just for fun. Okay guys, so right before the giveaway, I gave you a quick look at how I wrap my risers. And again, there's a bunch of ways to do that. You can be careful with each one of the risers and try to get it cut exactly to length, or you can just take that electrical tape and wrap it all the way around those little PCIe boards and get them on there. But up next, I wanna to talk to you about how to remove thermal paste from a processor, how to remove it from the fan, and also how to apply it if you need to. And maybe you're just doing some troubleshooting, you're swapping out a motherboard, maybe you got a new fan, whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of work I did in a recent build so you can see how I do that and hopefully it'll help you out if you've never done it before. All right, here we go. 
So we're gonna get this processor pulled out of here. We're gonna get the thermal paste taken off and I'm just using a paper towel for that. So I'm just using the paper towel and I'm gonna clean off the large amounts of the thermal paste. I'm going to get as much as I can with the paper towel. And we also have to do the bottom of the fan because we're going to be replacing that. Now what I've got here is the Arctic number no. one thermal material remover and it comes with thermal surface purifier. It's the second stage. And then the Arctic Silver 5. While we're at it, so I'm doing each within the same steps. I'm going to get the largest amounts of this off that I can before using any of the liquids. All right, looks pretty good. Move back over to the processor. And I'm going to use the thermal remover number one. All right, so I'm just going to apply it right on the processor here. Start with a little drop. It says to let it wait about 30 to 60 seconds. All right. We're going to use this. Look at that already. Getting some off. Okay, looks good. All right, looks pretty good. Now we're gonna move over to the number two solution. So the instructions read basically the same, except that after putting a few drops on, it doesn't give us the 30 to 60 seconds that we have to wait. Gonna go in with our Q-tip first. Yeah, looking really good. All right, it looks pretty good. We're gonna run with that. So I still have the original case that this came in. So that'll be its temporary home as we move this over to another motherboard. Ready to move it over. Do one last check to make sure everything's cleaned off. If you don't, if you have any little bits or parts that aren't cleaned quite well enough, you can actually generate heat by the paste not being applied properly. Now, I'm gonna do the P method. Right in the middle, about the size of a P. So if you get too little thermal paste, you can actually obviously generate heat. If you get too much thermal paste, you can actually conduct heat, which we don't want. So hopefully, if we got it right, we'll keep an eye on the temperatures. And usually everything comes out okay, but after you reapply thermal paste, you just kind of want to keep an eye on things. 
Okay guys, so the last tip for today is actually, it's a, one that is common sense for a lot of folks, but again, for people that are new to building PCs or new to rig building or want to get into it, it may just be something that you've never had to deal with before. And that is static electricity. Static electricity can be deadly to your system. So just a few quick tips I wanted to point out to you. Now, you'll get all different kinds of feedback from people that have done this before, um, and it'll be all over the board. So for example, some people will say you don't need to worry about it or that they never really do anything to address it. And then you'll get people on the far other side of the spectrum that say that they go to extremes. Here's what I would tell you, and this is my advice. At the bare minimum, anytime you're working with a system, with components inside a system, especially if you've walked away for a little bit and you've come back, always, always, always ground yourself. And you can do that simply by grabbing a piece of metal a lot of times I grab the metal on the chassis that I'm working on and just hold it for a second or two and that's all you need to discharge any of the static electricity that's built up at the end of your fingertips or anything like that. Um, it also is helpful if you don't do your build in a room that has carpet in case you're moving around a little bit and you're generating that static electricity. Um, now you'll hear some folks, they'll go as far as to maybe even buy the static protection wristbands that clamp onto something metal so that they're always grounded. That is perfectly fine. There's lots of different ways to do this. I don't do that. Uh, but again, I just make sure I obsessively make sure that I am grounded. And so for example, I just grabbed one of my B250 mining expert motherboards and you can see, I mean, I handle this with a lot of care. You'll see people that just grab this and handle it like it's um, a bologna sandwich or something like that. But uh, I handle these with care. I try to keep my hands off of the board itself uh, as much as I possibly can. And, um, you know, again, just make sure that you're grounded when you're handling these components. But a lot of times people, when they are building, they don't want to go ahead and put the motherboard into the chassis. So you want to find something that you can build on. Now, more likely you can just put this on a piece of cardboard or the box that it came in or something like that, and you're probably going to be fine. But if you want to take some extra precautions, which I recommend because when you're doing that build and some ghosts in the system start popping up, you don't want to wonder if you did damage the motherboard while you were doing the install. So one of the things I often do is I will pull the static protective bag out with it and use that to rest this on. I'll set that on top of the box that the motherboard comes in and then I'll start building on that. And just a quick tip there, let me grab that bag. All right, so here's an example of one of the bags that the motherboard comes in. And I've heard people say that, I don't know if this is true, I'll be 100% honest. It does make a little bit of sense to me, but uh, I've heard people say that the exterior of these bags is not uh, static electricity repelling, that it's the interior. And again, I don't know if that's true, but it got in my head enough that when I take my motherboard out of this bag, I turn it inside out and I set it on top of the cardboard or where, whatever my working surface is. And then I set this uh, in that. I set it on top of there and then put on my processor, my RAM, the heat sink, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so there's just a couple tips there just to get you going. But remember guys, hey, just as a bare minimum, boom, make sure you're grounded. Do it obsessively anytime you're working inside these machines. And when you do that, when you touch that, don't ever go inside the machine if you got power on. I guess that's a little bonus tip there for the beginners out there is don't just turn the machine off, actually unplug it from the wall because you can have electricity build up on the board itself inside the power supply and it can still discharge. And it can actually, in a worst case scenario, it can actually kill you. So you want to uh, turn the machine off, unplug it, and then wait five seconds. Uh, on some of these machines, you can press the power button and hold down, it's either three to five seconds, and it will go ahead and discharge any remaining energy that it has built up as well. I've noticed that not all models do that, so that may be hit or miss there, but at the bare minimum, unplug from the wall, count to five, make sure you're grounded and you're ready to go. Okay, Raptors, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helped some of you beginners out a little bit. Again, for some of you veterans that watch through this, please leave any comments or suggestions you have in the comments below. Keep an eye out for questions from maybe some beginners that are in the comments. I do get a fair amount of those by email, but guys, if you leave it in the comments, everyone can take a look at them and uh, can, can respond. So, And that goes the same for direct messages inside of Discord as well. But we've got some fun content coming up, so I hope you stay tuned for that. Be sure to hit that bell for notifications for new videos being posted, and we will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.